Now, first of all, the inheritance inheritance tax is applicable on two things. Uh, one is the lifetime gift, and second is on death state of an individual. These are the incidents when we have to apply inheritance tax. And in lifetime gift, we have two type of uh, gifts. One is classified as potentially transfer. And other is classified as chargeable lifetime transfer. So these two, two incidents are there. Potentially exempt transfer and lifetime chargeable transfer. And Technically, this life transfer is when you are gifting something to a trust normally. And the situation of potentially exempt transfer, when a gift has been given to son, daughter, brother, sister, other than trust usually. Now, as far as the lifetime tax is concerned, let's talk about first potentially exempt transfer rule. Now, at the time of transfer, this is exempt. So no tax is applicable on potentially exempt transfer. It's completely exempt at the time of transfer. But if donor die, then there is a possibility that the potentially exempt transfer might be taxable. And then we have to apply seven year rule. If donor die within seven year or die after seven years. If donor die within seven year, then this potentially exempt transfer becomes a taxable transfer. And if donor survive seven years, then it is completely exempt. No tax, complete exemption. And remember that uh, the lifetime tax is applicable on, IHT is applicable on, in case of lifetime gift, transfer of value. A gift is usually classified as a transfer of value from one person to another. So we need to find out transfer of value sometimes, especially in case of shares. And similarly, this chargeable lifetime transfer, again, there are two classifications. At the time of transfer, this is taxable, this is not exempt. This is taxable. Who is going to pay tax? Either donor or donor. If donor pay tax, then it is a net gift. And it will attract a tax rate of 20%, which will be given in the tax sheet. And in case of donor, this is a gross one, and the tax rate would be 25 and if donor die, then again the seven year rule is applicable. If donor die within seven years or after seven years. So suppose if donor die within seven years, then additional tax is payable. Some more tax is applicable and the rate at the time of death is 40%. And if donor survives seven years, no more tax, only lifetime tax, no additional tax. And who is going to pay tax in, in the case of death? That is to be paid by tax is to be paid by trustee.
Now let's find out how we can calculate tax on CLT. CLT lifetime tax. In order to calculate lifetime tax, first we need to identify transfer of value. This is the gift value, transfer of value. And then we have to deduct all possible exemptions. There are many exemptions in inheritance tax. So we have to deduct all possible exemptions. And this would be the chargeable amount, which might be gross chargeable amount, or it might be a net chargeable amount. This is chargeable amount. It might be gross or it might be net. And from this chargeable amount, then we'll deduct nil rate band available. And after deduction of this, the value is called taxable amount. And then IHT is payable at the rate of either 20% or 25% depending on who is going to pay the tax. This is the performa of PLT lifetime tax. Now, as far as the exemption is concerned, we have annual exemptions. And annual exemption value is 3000 for tax year, for every year, for every tax year, it's 3000. And one year carry forward is also allowed if it is not used, unused of last year, unused of last year can be added to current year. So maximum annual exemption is 6,000. And along with this, there is marriage exemption. In case of marriage, if someone gives gift, then again, marriage exemption is exempt. So from the parent's point of view, the amount of exemption is 5,000. From uh, grandparents, it's 2,500 from uh, bride to groom or groom to bride, 2,500 and others, 1,000. Up to these value, it is exempt. And I'm, I'm talking about lifetime exemption. Some are applicable on potentially exempt transfer and some are applicable on chargeable lifetime transfer. Like this marriage exemption is not applicable on lifetime transfer. Annual exemption is applicable on both potentially exempt transfer as well as the lifetime transfer. Along with, we have uh, one exemption which is called small gift exemption. And this relates to the gift value up to 250 pounds per person per annum. So this is exempt. But if the value of the gift is more than 250, then the whole amount is taxable. Remember that the inter spouse is always exempt. Whether during lifetime or at the time of death. It's always exempt. So there is no tax on this. Now one important thing is how to calculate transfer of value. After exemption, we need to find out how to calculate transfer of value. So transfer of value is 
value of state before transfer. We need to find out this. That what is the value of state before transfer, before gift, and we'll deduct. Then I'll deduct value of state after transfer. And this is usually we have to calculate in the case of transfer of shares normally. This is the transfer of value. Now, as far as the nil rate band is concerned, NRB. So NRB is available for every year in which the gift was made. But this NRB we have to compare. Suppose uh, the year is uh, like 2021. And suppose NRB is given as 3,25,000. But we will not deduct the entire amount. Rather, we have to see, we have to follow a rule which is called seven year accumulation rule. And we have to compare this NRB with gross chargeable amount of the last seven years. Gross chargeable amount. If there is any gross chargeable amount, suppose one lakh twenty five thousand, suppose, then this leftover two hundred thousand is available NRP. So this look back seven year rule is very important. Against this, we look back seven years. Look back seven years from the date of gift and if there is any chargeable lifetime value in the previous seven years then this value will decrease the available nrc so look back seven years we will consider only chargeable lifetime gross chargeable value not the potentially exempt transfer value Now, once we have we paid tax on CLT during lifetime, either 25% or 20%, then at the time of death, this, this is the possibility that both PET becomes taxable first time and on CLT, there is some additional tax to be paid by Tony. So how we can calculate then tax on potentially exempt transfer and tax on chargeable lifetime transfer. Let's talk about CLT at the time of death. Remember inheritance tax is not a difficult one, quite easy, quite scoring. We can score good on this if there is a question. Usually, there is a mix of CGT and IHT usually. So at the time of death, we'll start our working not from transfer of values, rather from gross chargeable amount. This, is, this will be the starting point. And then we'll deduct NRB. NRB at the time of death will be given as well. And again, we'll look back seven years and see gross chargeable amount of the last seven years, cumulative seven years. And this is the available NRB. Now here, when we look back seven years, we'll look back from the date of gift, not from the date of death. And consider in the previous this seven year all CLT and those PAT which becomes taxable later on. So after gross chargeable amount in NRB will get a taxable value, a taxable amount. And at the time of death, IHT rate is 40%. 
again this is given in the text and on which we'll get one more relief which is called taper relief and this taper relief is only available when the donor die between 3 to 4 years 4 to 5 years 5 to 6 years or 6 to 7 years minimum percentage is 20 then 40 then 60 and then 80 so we'll apply this taper relief on iht and after taper relief we'll deduct a figure and from this figure we'll deduct the life time tlt tax paid we'll deduct this as this would be my iht paid so this is the format of the calculation which we need to perform at the time of death now as far as potentially exempt transfer is concerned if that becomes taxable at the time of death so what we can do we can find out the gross chargeable amount or simply chargeable amount against that pet and the same will deduct the available nrb as per the look back 7 years rule will apply look back 7 years rule deduct the available nrb and that becomes the taxable amount and iht rate is same at the rate of 40 and also like the previous one the taper relief will be available if donor die within 3 to 4 years or to 5 years then on this we'll calculate taper relief and this becomes the tax payable on pet so this is how the lifetime gifts are taxable at the time of gift or at the time of death of an individual moving forward another thing is that uh, if someone do not transfer any lifetime gifts or uh, have all the stuff in death estate then will it be a financial will it be a feasible thing to do that whether we should transfer lifetime gift or should held gift in the death state so remember there is a concept of fall in value relief fall in value this fall in value says that if the value of gift decreases then you will get a relief called fall in value of relief so suppose the gift value is 200000 and at the time of death its value has been increased to 350000 then if there is an increase in value will not consider that value if there is a decrease in value then ultimately we'll get some relief fall fall in value relief so how that gift value is value at the time of gift suppose that was 200000 and value on death and suppose it's 150000 this 50000 is fall in value relief now after lifetime gift that state working
so if someone die and left many things in his will in his or her will then we have to identify the value as per we can say that we have to value each option on the basis of open market value we we'll consider the value of assets and value of liabilities and the assets are usually based on open market values so for example we have suppose assets 800000 on the basis of open market value then we will deduct the obligations on the person suppose obligation is 100000 and this is the net value this is the value of estate and from this value we will deduct inter spouse transfer inter spouse exemption there might be political exemption political party exemption similarly exemption against gift to charity out of that state so let's assume that it is zero so this is my gross chargeable state now again like in the lifetime gift or at the time of death will also deduct nrb again here will deduct nrb also will deduct rnrb but this rnrb is not av available every time rather it depends on some condition if that condition satisfies then we will take r and rb as well so after deduction of these we will get taxable value and then on this taxable value we will apply ist at the rate of 40% there is no taper relief on that state and this is the ist payable in simple terms very easy to calculate now here look back seven rule is also applicable look back seven years rule from the date of death rather than the date of transfer of gift now let's calculate from the right up now see this question Now see, today's date is first June. Kepler gave his nephew G six hundred shares, a thirty percent holding in M Limited on first June two thousand and eight, two thousand eighteen. And nephew falls under potentially exempt transfer. And on first May twenty twenty two, Kepler died. and left the remaining 1400 shares to g in his death state so one is the lifetime gift another is the gift at the time of death state the following information is available kepler kepler died on first may was uk resident and domicile has two nephews he left 1400 shares in m limited worth 546000 to g and the residue of his estate valued at 482h 
remaining estate and uh, some lifetime gifts made by Kaplan. First Feb 2017, he gave a house to nephew. On 1st July 2017, watch costing 900 to each of his two nephews and then 600 shares in Messier Limited to G. These three are the lifetime gifts. Now, Messier Limited is incorporated in UK and uh, Kapler subscribed for 2,000 shares initially. Now, as far as the holding is concerned, we need to find out transfer of value of the initial gift of the shares, that is 600 shares. We don't have the transfer of value available. So, we'll find out the transfer of value from this data will we can find out transfer of value and then the asset value at the time of transfer is given now see the requirement Calculate the inheritance tax payable by G against the gift of shares in 2018 and the inheritance of shares in May 2022. Now, first of all, you have to see here that how many lifetime gifts are there and if they are talking about 2018. So in 2018, our first gift given is 600 shares. So we need to work out that what is the transfer of value of 600 shares. I'll use this data in order to calculate transfer of value. Total shares subscribed is 2000 and uh, potentially exempt transfer against 600 shares. So we need to find out the value of 600 shares first. Now see. Two thousand shares, and we have subscribed two thousand shares. So initially, per share value on the basis of hundred percent holding was four eighty five, and now from two thousand six hundred shares sold, and the remaining shares are fourteen hundred out of two thousand. So we'll see how many, how much percentage is available, how much percentage is left over, so that I can identify the value. It's 70%. Now the holding is 70%. These two values are relevant. These two values are relevant. Now let's find out transfer of value. The transfer of value is transfer of value is values of shares before transfer so before transfer we have 2000 shares and per share value is 485 now out of this now the remaining value left is 1400 shares and the percentage is C110. So how much is the fall in value? We need to identify how much is the fall in value. Well, 
ثلاث مينتنس Now, what is the value? Two thousand multiplied by four eighty-five. The value before transfer was nine seventy. The value after transfer is four thirty-four. So the difference is called transfer of value. So this transfer of value is five lakh thirty-six thousand. This is the transfer of value. as this is a potentially exempt transfer and the donor die within 7 years because this was made on this was made on june 2018 as you can see and the debt debt is first may 2022 so it means we have 19 20 21 and 22 so it's within 3 to 4 years the debt is within 3 to 4 years there will be a taper relief as well now from as it is a potentially exempt transfer so at the time of that it becomes taxable so we need to find out first of all transfer of value i have just calculated transfer of value which is Five thirty six triple zero. Now, from this transfer of value, I need to find out exemptions. And in this question, one of the exemption given, we haven't talked about this, and that is called business property relief. B P R. And another is annual exemption amount. So. as far as bpr is given i'm just writing the answer of bpr later on we'll discuss about bpr 6367843 and annual exemption so we need to find out the tax year of the gift and the tax year of the gift is its uh, tax year is 2018 and 19 this is the tax year of the gift now as far as previous gifts are concerned might be the lost annual exemption so in first june 2018 the current year 3000 is available but the last year there was two gifts 900 each to his two nephews that means 1800 so keeping in mind the annual exemption available is let me calculate here that annual exemption of 1819 is 3000 and unused is last time 3000 and the gift value was 1800 unused was 1200 so annual exemption total is 4200 this 4200 is the annual exemption and after this we get chargeable amount and this chargeable amount is 163957 now i have to use look back rule with nrb nrb is available 3 lakh 25000 we have to look back 7 years from the date of transfer and here we need to work out how many gifts were there so we need to work out the lifetime gifts for this nrb so let me work out here that there are two gifts one is on 2017 other is on 1st july 2017 and the value has been given 1st feb 2017 a house worth 3 lakh 11000 and a watch two watches costing 900 each let's calculate 
first step three triple one and here we have 18 these are the two previous gifts now annual exemption of two previous years it's 6000 and annual exemption of the current year is 1800 because this is available only so it's 35000 and it is zero now look back 7 years and in look back 7 years we have uh, how many gifts from 1st june 2018 if you look back 7 years we have uh, Watch to nephews. So we have two potentially exempt transfers, and these are taxable. So it means what? We'll consider the total value, and the total value is, as far as look back seven years is concerned, three lakh five thousand. So it's three lakh five thousand, and the leftover is twenty thousand available NRV. And after deduction of NRV, we'll get the taxable amount, and that is going to be one four three nine five seven. And now we have to apply IHT. So IHT at the rate of Forty percent. Five seven five eight three. Then we can deduct the paper relief. It is the case of three to four. The so twenty percent paper relief is available. So fifty seven five eight three. The liability has been decreased by twenty percent. See, so yes, I, I I cannot see what you are writing. Now, yeah, it's okay now. So the paper relief value that has been available now twenty percent. Why twenty percent? Because the death time is three to four years, and it has been given in the tax sheet that what is the paper relief rule. You can see in the tax sheet. So it's 20%, and that is 11517. And this is the tax payable by the person who gets the gift. This is the IHD payable. The issue that normally a student has to face is. The NRB rule, the seven year accumulation rule. So, in the case of lifetime tax, we have to see seven years from the date of gift. In the case of uh, lifetime death tax, again, we have to see seven years from the date of gift. And in case of death state, we have to look back seven years from the date of death rather than from the date of gift. This was the uh, requirement. First one that calculate IHT on this potentially exempt transfer. Now, moving forward, I was discussing about the death state that uh, in the case of a person's death, will identify his will. We'll identify all the assets, all the obligations, inter-spouse transfer, transfer against charity, then NRB, then RNRB. Well, let's talk about something more on that state. As far as the assets are concerned, 
we have to take all the assets we have to consider all the assets no exemption in iht as far as obligation is concerned only deduct those obligations which are legal obligation genuine obligation similarly if there is any funeral charges then these funeral charges are deductible expense from the asset allowable expense every asset you need to take on open market value except for the life assurance policy in case of life assurance policy if the person has life assurance policy then instead of open market value take proceed from insurance policy that proceed might be lower or higher we have to take the proceed we have to check the proceed now one more imp one one important thing is that if the death estate comprises of a house a residential house and that house has been transferred to direct descendants then we'll get r and r b who is direct descendant children and grandchildren if a house is there and that has been gifted to either children or grandchildren then there is an eligibility of r and r b now we will get r and r b against this house as far as r and r b value is concerned it's given in the tax sheet 175000 but we'll apply a rule we have to see what is the value of house we have to ha find out the ha house value net of mortgage suppose this is 200000 and r and r b limit is maximum One lakh seventy-five thousand. So we'll apply a rule that is lower of, and one lakh seventy-five thousand is the amount of R in R B that we can deduct from the debt from the debt estate. First condition is that there must be a house, and house has been transferred to a direct descendant. Sometime it happens that there was a house, and the person who died. has transferred that house to spouse now as you know that spouse is all, always already is exempt so it was not a wise decision so it is a possibility that all the parties who are not agree on this terms and who are agree on variation in will there is a possibility that you can change the will but that change is only allowed if it's for tax purpose so what we can do will plan we can change the uh, will in such a way that can minimize the tax liability or maximize the benefit so for example originally the will was that the house has been transferred to wife now in the variation in will we have given wife something different and house has been given to direct descendant in order to get r and r b now one more thing that sometime it happens that inter spouse husband and wife can transfer their unused n r b transfer of unused n r b for example mr a mr a b we are suppose 
trying to calculate the death values here we need to find out the value of his wife death state so his wife's own nrb is given in the tax sheet 325000 and if there is any unused then we will add this unused nrb to this figure and as a result my nrb will exceed now what is the concept of unused at the time of death of a first partner, suppose NRB was higher than the value of a state. So suppose, uh, let's assume value of a state was 200,000. And NRB was, suppose NRB was 300,000. 100,000 NRB is unused. Now, what to do with this unused one? Will not add directly this 100,000 to NRB of his wife. Rather, we will find out a percentage. So first, we will find out the percentage of un unused over used one. So it's 100,000 unused out of 300,000. So that is, I guess, the percentage is 33. 3333. This is the unused percentage. Now we'll apply this unused percentage on the next spouse death. Suppose his percentage was three, his value was 325,000. Then we'll apply this 3333 and we'll get so it's. One zero eight two two five. It's one zero eight two two five. Now the wife get more NRB. The more NRB, there will be less tax. So the concept is, husband can transfer at the time of death. His remaining unused can be transferred to wife. Wife's remaining unused can be transferred to husband. And so as there is a concept of Transfer of R and R B. This can also transfer from spouse to one another. Suppose there is a death of one spouse, and in her death state, there is a house which is left to children. So it means minimum 175,000 is available on NRB. And suppose previously there was a death of husband and his unused RNRB is completely available. Now at the time of wife's death, we can transfer this 1,75,000 and now the total RNRB is 3,50,000 available. One more point. Gift to charity. Normally, the rate of tax is 40%. At the time of death. But sometimes there is a concept ap applicable that is called reduce rate, which is applicable on death. And the reduce rate is 36% rather than 40%. And this is only applicable when you give 
gift to charity and condition is satisfied against this tax rate. We'll do some past paper working on this gift to charity later on. But remember, sometimes the death rate is 40% and sometimes the death rate is 36%, depending on how much amount has been given to charity. Okay, one more thing that sometimes it happens that when we transfer quoted company's shares and uh, we need to work out the price, we need to work out the share price. So in case of quoted shares and securities, you know that market price of the share is available, then, but we'll apply a rule and this is very important. So we'll apply a rule that is called lower of rule. See, this is the rule. Very important one because we need to find out in case of quoted company. See, in case of quoted company, this is the rule. The value of quoted shares and securities for IHT purpose is computed as this is lower of lower of value, lower of number one. We have quarter of method, number two, average method. So under quarter of method, we'll take lower price. And then the difference of higher and lower price multiplied by one fourth value in this way you get the quarter of method and then average of the highest and lowest recorded bargain that will be given to you in the question that a single day what is the highest recorded bargain what is the lowest recorded bargain what is the higher price and what is the lower price and you will find out the lower of quarter of method and average of the highest and lowest recorded bargain most of the time we need to calculate this value. One is transfer of value and other is the lower of quarter of method and average of the highest and lowest recorded value. 